lost it. Hello and thanks for staying with us. This political platform and my name is Amicia Nakwe. Beautiful uh, Thursday morning in the nation's capital. We are celebrating our democracy. Uh, it is uh, International Women's Day, a day countries around the world set aside to take a look at the plight and challenges of women and dangerous species, especially in third world countries such as Africa and on this occasion, uh, we'll be celebrating our Nigerian women. Uh, what do we do to give them their deserved pride of place in our country? We know very well that uh, women based on religious and cultural practices are given the back seat uh, in our national life, unlike elsewhere where they play a prominent role uh, in, their nationals, uh, in their nation's development efforts. Because of our culture, because of our religion, it will be pretty difficult to wait, uh, what is happening in other parts of the world, uh, especially the advanced uh, countries, uh, to uh, take place here in Nigeria. Some people hold tenaciously to cultural and religious uh, uh, practices, but that is not discouraging. Some of us who are here, who are women's rights activists and so many other Nigerians uh, campaigning for the improvement of the lot of women uh, in the country. How do we give them uh, more roles to play in our governance process. Uh, there are so many practices that are discouraging them, but we must move uh, beyond that to ensure that we give them what they need. And for me, the first step in towards uh, uh, that regard is to empower them economically. Uh, once women are empowered, once you are, give them access to education, make them imbibe skills, and they begin to earn uh, money, begin to expand their material uh, base, inadvertently, uh, they will have more role to play and get more voice, not just within their families, not just within uh, groups and organizations, not just within political parties, but at the national center stage. So we propose that efforts uh, should be put towards uh, ensuring that we empower our women uh, with a view to uh, freeing them from that bondage so that uh, they will have a voice to speak for themselves. There's uh, some disturbing uh, uh, trends that came out from the National Assembly on Wednesday, uh, the Senate uh, to be specific. Uh, some senators spoke on a motion of na urgent national importance uh, raised by one of the senators, and the uh, conclusion was captured by the Deputy Senate President Ike Kuramadu when he alleged that Nigeria's democracy is under threat. Very worrisome, very concerning. He pointed at the action of some state governors uh, whom he claimed are taking actions that may ultimately uh, provide an excuse for the military to once again uh, become part of our governance process after uh, the exit of the military and the return of democracy in 1999. Specifically, a lot of uh, allegations that were raised against the Kogi state governor, uh, the case of a senator who was doing an empowerment program, uh, Senator Ahmed Ogembe of uh, Kogi Central uh, Senatorial District, uh, his program was attacked by talks, suspected talks, and there were there have been reports of uh, talks attacking opposition members uh, in Kogi State. Reference was also made to uh, the pulling down, demolition of a building of uh, someone who has opposite and opposing uh, political views to Governor uh, Nasir Rufai of Kaduna State. Uh, this truly threats to our democracy. We'll be speaking with uh, the spokesperson of. Uh, the Deputy Senate President, Ucha Nichukwe, as well as uh, uh, the spokesperson of the Kogi State Governor, uh, Yehaya Belodaze uh, Kinsley Fangwo, for their perspective on this issue. The Federal High Court yesterday in Abuja sentenced uh, two persons uh, to a life imprisonment for their role in the October 1, 2010 Independence Day bombing. Charles Okan will be Mwabweze were handed uh, life sentences each. Since the trial has been on for a long time, 2010 and 2018, that's eight years. Uh, justice, uh, after all, for the 12 people that died uh, in that uh, 
very unfortunate incident. Their relatives will be happy that, yes, it took a long time, but finally, justice is done. These two men, alongside one other, uh, Edmond, uh, who was also sentenced to uh, live imprisonment in 2013. It will be enough to, in, uh, of course, tell Nigerians that uh, the agencies that are working, the judiciary is working to ensure that justice is made to bear on uh, criminals. My colleagues are here. Of course, it's almost a full house. Uh, Ijama Samo uh, is with me in the studio. Thank you very much, Amichi. Uh, it's a happy day for women. It's a day to celebrate the women all over the world. And it's also a day to wake up our consciousness, uh, to let the women know that um, uh, it is time for them to stand up. It is time for them to take part and participate in governance, decision making, and also other things that has to do with um, a development of the nation. Because right here in Nigeria, it's, it's so surprising that uh, we don't even have up to 13% women in decision making and in governance. In the 8th Assembly, up to, up to, I'm even saying up to, it's supposed to, be, it's supposed to be 35% affirmative action. But I don't think we have up to 13%. In the 8th Assembly, it is even worse. In the 7th Assembly, it was even better, talking about the lawmakers. In governance, how many women uh, do you find in positions of uh, uh, decision making as ministers, uh, as even ministers of state, even in various states, as commissioners and even deputy governors? So I think it is time. Uh, Nigeria begin to wake up. Let's look at other nations, or even in Africa, like in Liberia. Uh, the last uh, president of Liberia, Ellen Salif, Johnson Salif, is the woman, and she actually did wear. And just recently, they gave her award. So uh, I think we will give the woman a chance. Uh, we are appealing to the she men. She won for, the Mo Ibrahim uh, uh, yes, uh, award, award for good governance. That's five exactly. Million that's to and tell you what the first time in about three years. Uh, because for over three years, nobody, no in president Africa, in, Africa, in Africa won a qualified So that's to tell you that if you allow the women, you will find positive and good governance if you allow them. Though we have some, some of them who are not too good, those who are in power, uh, allegedly uh, believed to be not too good leaders. But I know that 70% of women have a heart to do good things. So let, let the men support the women. Let them push them forward. And at times I, I begin to wonder why women are not even appreciating uh, themselves. Ujueje, is it all about the lamentations uh, that we do on annual basis? Uh, there will be wars, conferences, rallies, uh, calls on the men to provide more opportunities for women. Is it what we are going to be doing on annual basis? Aren't there some other things we could do? For me, I believe the women uh, should uh, brace themselves. Power, is, is it is said, is taken, not given. Uh, can the women uh, push out, go beyond these rhetorics, these usual, these uh, rituals, and do something uh, extraordinary to get their fair share in the Nigerian uh, governance process. Amechi, the women in Nigeria, particularly the, uh, the, the activists, have been doing quite a lot over the years. But of course, you know that uh, in Nigeria, it's uh, what you call a man's world. And uh, our cultural beliefs are part of the most... Uh, uh, a hindering factor in allowing women to you know, hold uh, public offices or to be involved in governance. And uh, these are not things that uh, you wish away over the years. I have been at the National Assembly several times when they bring women affairs, uh, women and even children affairs, and the men will just laugh <laughs> to themselves as they are women. Uh, okay, we will we, 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 we vote in favor. By the time they say uh, yeah, they should vote. You hear nay, the name will Especially almost what tear down the to roof. The gender equality uh, yeah, the ex ex exactly. It was so, roundly defeated. Exactly. So it has been like that. And we also have an, another problem. You find that even where women are pushing to come out, even fellow women join the men to pull them down. Some women do not even believe in the ability of the women. So I mean, look at even just the office environment where we operate. When you're a woman at the head of a department, even fellow women look down on you. They join the men to pull you down. But women should be resolute. They should be firm. They shouldn't give up. I, 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 I know that the government that has honored women more since 1999 is the Obasanjo administration because a lot of women were involved in the work then. And you, you could see the difference. Look, the economy prospered better under him. 
a whole lot of women were able to prove their mettle. That was when we discovered the obvious equations of Konjo Iwala, a whole lot of them. Nenadi Usman, they did very well. Even the ones that were special advisors did so, so well. So women can do it if given the opportunity. What you, <laughs> what, what you ask me is if we should continue doing this, if, or if this is what we will continue. But you, you can't stop until there's a change. It is it something that yeah, exactly it has to be consistent because if you stop, they will forget women. Okay. So until we begin to see that change, even a lot of people will say, "Oh, what about Patricia?" Ete? Have you forgotten also that before that sixth session folded up, they cleared Patricia? Ete, the house came out to say she was not guilty of those offenses. It was just a campaign. Politics. Politics, pure politics to remove her. She okay. was not guilty. The house itself cleared her. Let, let's go to a very important aspect of our program. Your males, we value, treasure them so much. Uh, let's share some of those uh, that you sent to our email platform, political platform at yahoo.com. And it's the male segment. You're welcome. I am Etenikan Akipu. And I'm Amaka Okoro. Welcome. We'll begin with a mail from Clifford Alozi in Madola, and he writes on the response from the released journalist Tony Ezimako yesterday on the program, the mail reads, listening to the released journalist Tony Ezimako through the political platform program yesterday, I could not believe my ears. I regretted drinking Panadol for someone else's headache. This is the man whose lawyer called into the political platform program to tell Nigerians that his health was badly affected in detention and he was being forced to divulge his source of information. But surprisingly, Tony came out to deny these allegations. To him, he was comfortable praying for more than 48 hours in detention with the DSS. Nigerians don't need a prophet to tell them that the first question the DSS could ask the journalist in this instance is to tell them the, so to tell them the source of his information. I think someone is economical with the truth. God help us. And Monday, Ame in Abuja is commending the National Assembly for finally passing the NFIU bill. He says, Dear political platform crew, please permit me to use this medium to commend the National Assembly members for finally passing the Nigeria's Financial Intelligence Unit bill after its conference report to harmonize their positions. I urge them to, as a matter of urgent national importance, transmit the bill to Mr. President for his immediate assent. In the same vein, I call on the President to appoint a very competent person of impeccable character and high integrity as the director of the NFIU. This is very important in order to avert a looming expulsion of the country by the Egmont Working Group and heads of IFIU as they converge in their crucial meeting scheduled for March 11th to 16th of March 2018 in Argentina. The government must take necessary steps to avert the expulsion of the country because the implications of the expulsion of Nigeria from the global network of 152 financial intelligence units will be very catastrophic as Nigerians with domestic debit and credit cards will find it very difficult carrying out financial transactions abroad and also foreign direct investment will nosedive. And on the state of security in the nation, Patrick Okponya in Abuja has this to say. Listening to your guest on the program concerning the attitude of Mr. President in respect to the senseless killings across the country presently, one can only pity the Nigerian security situation. Recently, in the United States of America, we watched President Trump with his team helping in the evacuation of the victims of hurricane. But back home, what do we have? A president who is waiting for security clearance before he can visit some parts of the country which he governs? What a shame. This is a clear indication that Mr. President has lost control totally in respect to security in Nigeria. Did Mr. President get a security clearance from anywhere before traveling to Kano for just a wedding party last week? If it's that unsafe for Mr. President to visit those troubled zones, then what is the faith of the armless civil civilians who live in those areas? Mr. President should understand that the life of every Nigerian is as important as his own and his team. God help my country, Nigeria. And this is how far we can go into those mail segments. Keep writing to us, the route to reach us is political platform at yahoo.com. Thank you so much uh, for uh, remaining with us. Some of our listeners are making inquiries about uh, the whereabouts of Mustafa Mohammed, our colleague. He's safe and sound. Uh, he will be joining us on this program 
uh, very soon is just uh, taking a little uh, miracle vacation. But let's go to our main issue for the day. Uh, I just, I'm just looking at two national dailies in front of me now. Uh, let's take a look at uh, their uh, headlines. This one from Daily Independence says, Nigeria's democracy risk military takeover by Ekwere Madu. That's the deputy senate president. The New Telegraph says, Nigeria's uh, democracy under threat, says Ekwere Madu. And if you go to all the other national dailies, uh, the outcome of a uh, plenary in, uh, in the Senate on Wednesday featured prominently where senators uh, raised concern about what they call threats to national security. Uh, uh, to the extent that they believe uh, it may instigate the military to come back again to Nigeria's politics. And I can hear Nigerians shout, uh, whichever what language you look at it from, it is nearly forbidden. But they say it is a real threat. Let's bring in uh, Uche Anichuku. He is uh, the spokesperson to the Deputy Senate President for uh, more uh, insight into the uh, position of the Senate yesterday. Uche Anichuku, thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, thank you and good morning, Mr. Amechi. So, is there a big threat uh, to our democracy? Uh, the uh, military be reminded that maybe uh, there may be a role for them. Uh, what made the Senate uh, get get to that point? Well, uh, Amechi, you know, um, when you if you want to travel, if you buy flight tickets. What it means is that you are going to use a plane. Democracy has its principles, lay down principles. Most times, what we call democracy dividend uh, in this time is not, they are not the democracy dividend because we, we can take a, a look at um, Libya and some other places that had autocratic leaders and they still had data infrastructure and uh, uh, data human development index than us. The real democracy dividend. The freedom, the the principles of separation of power, respect for human rights, and all those things that make democracy tick. Now, if you look at uh, what is happening in the country today, you will agree with me that those principles have been recklessly eroded.